do is we can express the concentration in seven way and that is very common and you have, I hope all of you have always heard it about that is molarity expressed as M. So what basically is molarity? Molarity, whenever we say, it is a way of expressing the solute in terms of number of moles. So when solute is expressing number of moles and solution is expressing liters, that ratio which you get, that fraction which you get is molarity. So if I go with the definition, molarity is nothing but the number of moles of solute. So your cellule has to be expressed in number of moles, okay, by volume of solution and very important it is the volume of the solution that means solute plus solvent in liters. That part you have to be very careful, okay. So remember that whenever we talk about number of moles of solute, and the ratio to volume of solution in liters, in liters, then that ratio which you get, that value which you get is known as molarity. Okay. Now the same thing if let's say we are given a mass of solute and the mass and the molar mass of the solute is known. Let us say that if Wb is the mass of solute given to us. Let's say in our problem, the number of moles is not given, but mass is given. Mass of solute is given, and what is given is Wb grams of actually is the mass of the solute. Okay, that is given to us. And let's say the molar mass of the solute is Mb. So Mb is the molar mass of solute okay and let's say we are given volume of solution not in liters but in milliliters i'm just trying to do a case where in problems if they have not given in liters and if they have given in other, other units how to actually deal with it so if the volume is given in the volume of solution in milliliter is given Okay, and let's say V is the volume of solution in milliliter. Then how this expression will change? Then therefore M, I hope it's clear, whenever we talk about number of moles of solute, if you don't know, please watch the video which I have uploaded in this channel as the mole concept. Okay, so according to the mole concept and if you understand mole concept, Number of moles can we can get it by using the mass of solute and molar mass of the solute. If a given mass, then the ratio of mass by molar mass is always equal to number of moles. Okay, so molar mass or the molarity will always be if I try to write the number of moles, what do I write as mass by molar mass Wb by Mb by volume but very important not given in liters but given in milliliters so if given in milliliters according to the definition of molarity i cannot express in milliliters so what i need to do i need to express this in liters how to convert milliliter to liter divided by thousand so when i do that the final expression which i get is molarity will be wb by mb into thousand by V. That becomes an important expression of molarity. Okay. So if number of moles is given to you and the volume is given in liters, you can directly take the ratio. But in most of the cases, in most of the problems, they don't give you number of moles directly. They give you a mass of the solute and they give you a particular solute so that you can find out the molecular mass. Volume is usually given in centimeter cube or is given in milliliter. In such cases, this would be a perfect formula to be used actually to solve such kind of problems, which we will be going to do in our next video. Now, if we go on for the next set of expressing the concentration, that is nothing but molality. Okay, it's quite similar 
expressed as small m. Whenever we talk about molality, remember that the definition goes nearly same. Molality is nothing but again number of moles of solute. It is again the solute is again expressed in number of moles, no doubt in that, but mass of solvent that is very important most of the students make mistake over here it is not the mass of solution it is the mass of the solvent in kg very important okay again in the very same way if i want to express this as number of moles of solute so what i can write is molality i can again write if i use the same notation it will be wb by mv again very same way mass of solute by molar mass of the solute by and in most of the problems what they do is they don't give you in kg they give you in grams so if let's say wa is the mass of solvent in grams then obviously we cannot express in grams according to the definition we have to express in kg so what we do is we divide it by thousand if i do that again it will be nearly the same i will get Wb by Mv into 1000 by Wa. Okay, that is nothing but the definition of molality in terms of weight of the solute, weight, sorry, weight of the solvent, weight of the solute, and molecular mass of the solute. Okay, which is usually the case, which is usually the problems which they will give you in various entrance examination, board examinations. Okay. So these are the types of problems or the formulas based on which the problems are asked. Okay, so the definition is this, but the same way can be expressed or the same definition can be expressed in terms of the weight and the molecular mass. Okay, now that is the third way of expressing it. And the final way of expressing is mole fraction. Okay, by the name itself, fraction and fraction of moles. So whenever we talk about mole fraction, try to understand that. What is this? Fraction of number of moles. Okay. So basically we are taking a ratio. Okay. So when we talk about ratio, ratio of what? Ratio of number of moles. Now we are talking about concentration, number of moles of solute to the total number of moles. That fraction is nothing but mole fraction. So if, let's say, if Na is the number of moles of solute, let's say, and Nb is the number of moles of solvent, okay? And let's say if I want to find out the mole fraction of A, that is solute, which we denote it by chi, okay? It's a letter chi, chi of A mole fraction of A is equal to the ratio of that component. Which component? A component. Na, number of moles by the total number of moles. Na plus Nb, solute plus solvent. It's not necessary, always it has to be two components. If there are three components, then you have to take Na plus Nb plus Nc. So basically it is the ratio of the number of moles of that component by the total number of moles. Okay. In the very same way, we can write for chi B also. So it will be Nb by Na plus Nb. So that is how it goes. Okay, so whenever we talk about the mole fraction, it is nothing but the ratio of the number of moles of one component to the total number of moles. Okay, and a very important point to note is that whenever you take the sum of the mole fraction chi A plus chi B, it should always come out to be 1. So whenever you solve any problems can mole fraction and if your answers are 1 point something, 2 point something, 3 point something, 4 point something, okay, that is definitely wrong. Mole fraction can never be greater than 1, okay. The sum of the mole fraction of any number of components, maybe it is 1, maybe it is 10 number of components, it has to be equal to 1. And if you want mole fraction of a component to be 1, that means there should be only one component in that particular system. So that cannot be a solution. So when it is solution, mole fraction has to be always less than one for a particular 
component. Okay, so this is what actually you need to know about concentration of actually solution. So concentration of solution can be expressed in this four ways. Now, a very important point which I want to add it over here is whenever you take this three, basically molarity, molarity and mole fraction, always remember that molarity is always least preferred. Okay? It means if you compare mole fra uh, molarity and molarity, I always prefer to take molarity instead of taking molarity. Now why it is so? Why molarity is not preferred? as to express the concentration of solution. When we try to find out that the reason why it is so, just now what I have told you, whenever we talk about molarity, okay, molarity is nothing but number of moles of solute by volume. This is the problem. According to one of the laws which you have learned, that is what we call as Charles law, volume is directly proportional to temperature. That means, as temperature will increase, volume will definitely increase. Now, that is the problem what happens with molarity. Molarity is dependent on temperature because it is dependent on volume. It uses a volume term, so it is dependent on temperature. So, what will happen is, if I make a solution at a lower temperature and if the temperature rises, okay, if the temperature becomes more, if temperature becomes more, then volume becomes more. And if volume will increase, then what will happen? Molarity tends to decrease. So if temperature varies, the concentration of the solution also varies if you have expressed it in terms of molarity. That's why expressing the concentration in terms of molarity is least preferred when temperature is varied. If at constant temperature, yes, you can use molarity. But if temperature is a variable, then using molarity is not preferred actually over the other okay so what we prefer is taking molality or mole fraction that would be much more preferred than molality okay and finally to end this remember that when we talk about the units of molality obviously it is number of moles by volume so it is mole per liter that is for molarity when we talk about molality it is number of moles by mass of solvent in kg so it is mole per kg and very important mole fraction mole fraction is number of moles by number of moles so what will happen is it will remain dimensionless so remember that mole fraction is always dimensionless there is no dimension for it there is no unit okay so that is all about this particular video do watch this particular video or the other videos in my channel and please do subscribe for this particular channel.